Welcome to learningayurveda.com. Today we are discussing about the second chapter of Sutrasthana of Ashtanga Hradaya. This chapter explains about Ayurvedic daily routine. The second chapter of Ashtanga Hradaya Sutrasthana is called as Dinacharya, Ayurvedic daily routine. Dina means daily and Charya means regimen. Healthy person should get up from bed at Brahmi Murta. The Brahmi Murta is before dawn or around 45 minutes before sunrise. It is around 5 to 6 am. Next, keeping in view of the condition of his body, the individual should pass urine and feces. Clean his teeth with twigs of any one of the following. Arka, that is Calotropis procera. Vata, Ficus bengalensis. Khadira, Acacia catechu. Karanja, Pongamia pinnata. Kakuba Terminalia Arjuna. Since in olden times there was there was no toothbrush and stuff, people used to use the twigs of any of these herbs to use the twig as a toothbrush. The thickness of the twig should be approximately equal to the tip of one's little finger. It should be 12 angular length. The tip of the twig should be chewed a little to make it as a brush. The twig should be of astringent, pungent, and bitter taste. Next, Danta Davana Nishedha or who should not brush teeth. The, the following individuals should not do teeth brushing. People suffering from indigestion, vomiting, dyspnea, cough, fever, facial paralysis, excessive thirst, ulcerations of mouth, heart disease, diseases of eyes, head and ears. So these people should avoid teeth, tooth brushing. Next, Anjana or cholerium. Savira Manjanam Nityam, Hitamakshna Stato Bhajet, Chakshu Stejo Mayam Tasya, Visheshat Shleshmato Bhayam, Yojayet Sataratre Asmat, Sravan Artham Rasanjanam. It is good to apply a special type of cholerium called as Savira Anjana to the eyes. It should be applied daily. Rasanjana, that is aqueous extract of Bar Barbarus Aristata, should be applied once in a week to drain out kapha or excessive secretions from the eyes. After cholerium application, healthy person should do Navana, that is nasal installation of drop. For this purpose, milk, herbal decoctions, herbal oils are usually used. After that, gandusha or gargling with warm water, milk or herbal decoctions or herbal oil should be done. Then dhuma or inhalation of smoke from herbs and spices should be done. And then bitter leaf chewing is done. Next, contraindications for tambula or bitter leaf chewing. Those suffering from wounds, bleeding diseases, dryness, redness of eye, poisoning, repeated unconsciousness, intoxication and from tuberculosis and chronic respiratory diseases, they better avoid chewing of bitter leaf. Next, abhyanga or oil massage. Abhyangam acharet nityam. Sajara Shrama Vataha, Drishti Prasada Pushti Ayuhu, Su Sapna Sutvak Dardyakrat. Shira Shravana Padeshu, Tam Visheshena Shilayet, Varjo Abhyangaha Kafa Grastaha, Krita Sanshuddhi Ajirini Bihi. Abhyangam is massage. It should be done daily morning. It delays aging, relieves tiredness and excessive of vata, that is aches and pains. It improves vision, nourishes body tissues, prolongs age, induces good sleep and improves tone and complexion of skin. It should be especially done on ears, head and legs. Massage should be avoided when there is increase of kapha in the body, soon after shodhana that is panchakarma procedure and during indigestion. Next Vyayama Lagavam karma samartyam dito agnihi medasahakshayaha vibhakta ghana gatratvam Vyayamat Upajayate Vatapitta Mayo Balo Rudo Ajirini Chatam Tejet Ardhyashaktiya Nished Vyastu Balibihi Snigda Boji Bihi Shitakale Vasantecha Mandameva Tato Anyata Tam Krutva Anasukham Deham Mardayet Cha Samantataha Exercise brings about lightness. It improves work capacity, increases digestion power, burns fat. 
It brings body into good shape. People with diseases originating from Vata and Pitta, children, elders, people with indigestion problem should not do exercise. Exercise should be done till one's half strength. Exercise should be done by those having full strength and who take oily food stuff. From December to May. At the end of the exercise, one should undergo mild massage. That is, pressing the body parts with mild to moderate pressure. Adverse effects of overexercise. Excessive thirst, emaciation, severe dyspnea, difficulty in breathing, bleeding disorders, exhaustion, feeling of debility even without any work, cough, fever and vomiting are caused by excess of exercise. Those who indulge in too much of exercise daily, who keep themselves awake till late nights regularly, who walk long distances regularly, who indulge in excessive sexual activities, too much of laughing, speaking and such other strenuous activities will perish just as a lion after vanquishing an elephant perishes. Next, Udvartana. Udvartanam Kafaharam Medahasaha Pravilai Sthiri Karanam Anganam Tvak Prasada Karam Param Udvartana is using powder for massage. It helps to calm down aggravated Kapha Dosha. It helps to burn fat. Hence it is one of the therapies that many Ayurvedic centers offer for anti-obesity treatment. Udvartana also brings in stability to body organs. It improves strength and skin complexion. Next, Snana or bathing. Deepanam Vrishyam Ayushyam Snanam Urja Balapradam Kandu Mala Shrama Sveda Tandra Thrit Daha Papmajit Bathing improves digestion, acts as aphrodisiac, prolongs life, increases enthusiasm and strength. It helps to get rid of dirt, waste products, sweat, tiredness, excessive thirst, burning sensation and microbes. Pouring warm water over the body bestows strength, but the same over the head makes for, makes for loss of strength of the hair and eyes. Bathing is contraindicated for those suffering from facial paralysis, diseases of the eyes, mouth and ears, diarrhea, flatulence, rhinitis, indigestion and who have just taken food. Next, Sadvratta or Good Healthy Conduct. Jirne Hitam Mitam Chadyat. One should always eat only after digestion of previous food that too in limited quantity. Na Vegan Nirayet. One should not induce natural urges forcefully. Example, urinating when there is no urge to pass urine. Na vegito anya karyaha. One should immediately attend to natural urges whenever they come without being busy in other activities. Next, words of wisdom or path of righteousness. All the creatures seek happiness. There is no happiness without righteousness. Hence, all should follow the path of righteousness. Friends should be served with affection and good deeds, whereas the others, that is wicked, should be kept at a distance. 10 types of bad deeds. Himsa, causing injury or torture. Steya, stealing or robbing. Anyata kama, unlawful sexual desire or activity, desiring for others. Paishunya, abusive or harsh speech. Parusha vachana, harsh speech. Andrata vachana, speaking untruth. Sambhinna alapa, speech causing separation, breaking of company, vyapada, quarrel, intention of harming, abhidya, jealousy, not tolerating good of others, and drig viparyaya, finding fault, misunderstanding, faithlessness, etc. These ten sins are pertaining to the body, speech, and mind should be avoided. Next, those who have no means of livelihood, who are suffering from diseases and who are afflicted with grief should be helped. Even the insects and ants should be, should be seen with respect, similar to a physician, king and guests. Beggars should not be disappointed, abused or objected. One should be very helpful even to his foes, even though they are not helpful. One should maintain a balanced mind both during calamity and prosperity. 
one should not be envious towards wealth and happiness of others kale bruyat speak only on the right occasion hitam bruyat speak good words be pleasant mitam bruyat speak little as per necessity do not argue do not say untrue things purva abhi bhashi be the first to greet to start conversation sumukaha have a, have a smiling face sushilaha have a good character karuna mrudu be courteous be soft in speech and activity na ek sukhi do not be a person who likes to be alone always na sarvatah vishrabdu do not believe everything around you na shankitah do not suspect everything around do not instantly think someone as your foe or that he is a foe of someone else do not publicly talk about insults that you underwent do not publicly talk about disaffection towards your king boss master senior etc keeping in mind the nature of the people one should deal with them in such manner as best pleasing to them becoming well versed in the art of adoring others the sense organs should neither be strained very much nor should they be fondled very much do not engage yourself in do not engage yourself in things that are devoid of three pursuits that is dharma righteousness artha wealth and kama plus on in all dealings and activities one should adopt the middle mean only and avoid extremes personal hygiene tips one should cut his hair nails and moustaches regularly keep feet ears nose ears urethra and anus clean take bath daily put on scents and good dress which is not superfluous but is pleasant to look at wear precious stones potent hands and herbs walk holding an umbrella putting on footwear and looking straight to a distance of 4 arms length in front of you in case of urgent work at night one should go equipped with a baton headdress and an assistant one should not invade on the shade of a holy tree on which deities reside one should not invade buddhist shrine materials of worship banner and unholy things heap of ash husk and dirt sand dunes boulders places of bali or offering sacrifices to god demons etc and bathing one should not swim across river with arms should not walk facing huge fire should not travel in a risky boat should not climb a tree doubtful of strength or ride on a vehicle which is in bad condition one should not sneeze laugh or yawn without covering his mouth one should not blow his nose not scratch the ground without any reason or in public should not do ugly movements of the parts of the body and sit on one's own heels for a long period of time one should stop the activities of the body of speech and of the mind before getting exhausted should not keep his knees above for long period one should not reside at night on trees meeting places of three roads or places where people assemble for recreation vicinity of a holy tree or a buddhist shrine meeting places of four roads and temple house of god one should not reside even during daytime in a place of slaughter a forest haunted house and a burial ground no one should gaze at the sun for a long time should not carry heavy weight on his head not see continuously objects which are minute shining dirty and unpleasant one should not engage in selling breathing free distribution or receiving of wine the person should avoid the direct breeze sunlight dust snow hard breeze should not sneeze belch cough sleep dine or copulate in improper postures should avoid the shade of a scaffold places hated by the king 
company of wild animals, biting animals and those with horns of means wicked. Avoid quarrel with good men. Avoid taking food, sex, sleeping, study and recapitulation at the time of meeting of the night and sunrise. Avoid the food given by enemies, given during sacrificial ceremony that is offered by large group of donors of different groups, that given by prostitutes and merchants. We should not make sound with the body parts, mouth and nails, nor shake the hand and hairs, should not move in between two receptacles of water, fire and the worshipful, should avoid the smoke of a cadaver, too much indulgence in wine, believing in independence for wom wicked women should be avoided. For an intelligent person, the world is a teacher, hence one should imitate the world after carefully considering their meaning and effect of such behavior. Compassion with all living beings, granting of gifts, controlling the activities of the body, speech and mind, feeling of selfishness in the interests of others. These are sufficient rules of good conduct. He who constantly thinks of how his day and night are passing and adopts the right way will never become a victim of sorrow. Thus was enumerated in brief the rules of good conduct. He who adopts it will surely attain long life, health, wealth, reputation and also the eternal world. Thus ends the chapter called Dhinacharya, the second in Sutrasthana of Ashtangarade. To learn Ayurveda in detail, please visit learningayurveda.com. Thank you.